Hello all and welcome to Wow Crochet yet again for another tutorial. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on this gorgeous little Tickosy, I know, gorgeous. And just underneath you will see, oh you can't see it there, sorry. There's no T in there which is good. There's a button on the bottom there. And there is also a button on the bottom there. This way you can take both sides undone, lift your tea cosy over, open up your lid, pour your water in and your tea and whatever, pop your lid back on, pop everything back over, button it there and button it there and gorgeous. Now in the tutorial towards the end I show you that you can actually add another button here if you like. Personally I don't like it. Um, I think if it was really loose and uh, uncomfortable then maybe but this is just gorgeous look at it no it's not loose at all check it out gorgeous now I show you how to adjust it for the white I don't show you a lot I just show a little bit here if you find that it's still big see this section here it's towards the very end of the tutorial and there are single crochets there just do some more single crochet two together you'll understand that when you do the end of the tutorial I forgot to mention that if you wanted to make it extra tighter I do however mention that our, let's get our label here so you can see it the yarn I used was carnival now it is an eight ply now an eight ply if you are overseas is a number three um, yarn this is actually an acrylic, premium acrylic yarn. I used just under half a skein. So it would have been, what, 70, about 70 grams. Um, and I'm sorry, <laughs> try that 35 grams, wake up Mary. The reason I said 70 is because you can use probably between 70 and 80 meters. Let's just go between 70 and 90 meters or 70 and 90 yards, okay, per color. Okay, so roughly 90 greens, 90 orange and 90 gold. I think the gold we used a little tiny bit more, but not much more. Okay, so this is a way of um, um, stash busting. So if you have a lot of yarn that you want to stash bust, this is a way to do it. Now, um, our project called for a size four millimeter hook. I'm trying to do this without the shade going in. A four millimeter hook. Um, yours truly use the four. If you have the smaller pot, I suggest to change to a 3.5 or use a hook size smaller than what is called for on your yarn. Okay, I hope that helps if you have a smaller one. However, during the tutorial towards the end when it was very messy with ends, I popped this on top of our um, tea, tea, hello, get it right Mary, small teapot. And in actual fact, it did fit because the small teapot is quite wide in width. So the actual cosy did fit. Gorgeous. Is it not gorgeous? Let me get out of the shade there. That's better. We'll move this out the way so you can have a better look at it. And look at that. Simply gorgeous. Now what I did with the buttons, on one side I put the button on, that, on there. On the other side I put the button on this side and the reason being was it was able to stretch it all over okay give it a good stretching now like I said you could have popped a button here I show you roughly how to do it you chain up three and then you've got a button there and you just loop it over I found it was a little awkward it looked a little weird I just like it like this I think it's perfect like this check it out gorgeous <laughs> and I stick to as much of the granny as I could with the granny stitch once I got to here I had to close it up otherwise it wouldn't work okay we really wanted to close it up keep it nice and tight everything's going to be kept warm in your tea teapot there you go I love 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 I know right huh gorgeous now you can use a cotton you can use a wool or you can use the acrylic I use the acrylic here only because I had it in stock and I really wanted to use some of my carnival yarn from Big W here in Melbourne. I'm sure uh, over in interstate as well, they will have carnival yarn in your Big W stores. Overseas, probably not sure about that, but you can use any yarn you like. Okay, gorgeous. I love, 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 and I love the colours. Great colour burst. 
and that's that so that's all i wanted to say guys you will need your scissors and you will need your stitch marker which yours truly forget to, to put in occasionally you will need your darning needle you really will need that needle towards the end because you're going to weave in your ends you will need two buttons you will need three if you want to pop one in here i didn't i thought it was perfect like that i'm happy to have it like that um, but i just used the two buttons one in the, the bottom here and one in the bottom there all right let's see if i can undo it without <laughs> see if i can undo the button there we go that's undone and the one over here might be a little tight because i haven't done this undone yet <laughs> i kept doing the other one undone there we go now so if you wanted to take your tea cozy off you can fill up your tea da -da -da -da. this is all done with one hand guys i'm very ambidextrous today <laughs> Pop it on, do your buttons up again, and there you go. All right, um, give me one second. Ta da, magic! <laughs> I did the buttons up. <laughs> All right, guys, so there you go. There's your little tea cozy. These are the items you will need. You will need your one, two, three colors. I had to count them then. <laughs> I've got so used to using them. I don't know how much I use. Can you believe it? Okay, so there's your little tea cozy. There's the things you will need. This is a very long tutorial, so I'm just going to let you go ahead and do it. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe and share and enjoy your tea cozy. Alrighty guys, you will need your scissors, you will need that stitch marker, you will need your sewing weaving needle, you will need your hook to suit your yarn. Now let me explain the yarn to you quickly. This is the Australian Yarn Carnival. You don't have to use this. This is actually 100% premium acrylic. You can use acrylic, you can use wool, you can use cotton, you can use anything you like. All right, now I just wanted to show you quickly, this yarn actually does call for a four millimeter hook. We are going to use the four. Four, let me grab it so you can see what I mean. For the larger pot, we will be using the four, okay? Now, have a look at this one here. So much smaller. Oh, I don't know if I can show you better. Let's lift it up a little. How's that? So it is, it is very much smaller. You know by quite a few centimeters actually so what I'm going to do at this stage is to tell everybody to make their granny squares exactly the same size we are going to be starting with our gold or whatever color you use you are using for your first color all right so it's basic if you have not done crochet before the stitches you'll need to know are chains single crochet half double crochet and double crochets actually I'm not sure about half double we'll see I can't remember whether I used it or not I have to look at the pattern all right but at this stage you'll need single crochet chains and doubles all right and a quick slip knot which we're going to do right now okay which is grab your tail end yarn over your finger once yarn over your finger twice hold it there grab your back loop and pass it halfway over hold it there grab the other loop passing it all the way over pop your hook in there and give your thread a tug this is only one way of um, making slip knots I might show you another few ways in the future so that's going to be good just for fun all right but in the meantime we're going to chain four if you are new to the channel and you haven't used the stitches but you still want to stick around I will make the stitches easier for you so you're just putting your yarn over your hook you're pulling your loop through and that's chain one you're doing one more two and three and four all right now that very first stitch you made pop your hook in there okay pull a loop through holding everything you need to make sure you're holding all of this but see that little thread right there make sure you can see it because that's going to be your center and you're going to be popping all your double crochets in there in a minute so grab that loop and pulling it through the loop on your hook you are chaining up three. One, two, and three. Okay, so now we're going to put a double crochet in that center, crocheting over all thicknesses, even your tail. Okay, so you yarn over your hook, popping your hook in the space, yarn over your hook, pulling up your loop. You should have three loops on your hook. It's a little bit awkward this first stitch, but after that it gets a little easier. Yarn over your hook, pull it through the first two loops on your hook yarn over your hook pull it through the last two loops and that's your 
It's actually classified as your second double crochet because in this round the chains will act as your first. So we're going to do a third double crochet, popping your yarn over your hook, put it through the space, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over your hook, pull through the first two, yarn over your hook, pull through the last two. So that's actually classified as one cluster set. So if you hear me say cluster set, that means there's three double crochet in there, okay? So now we're chaining one, okay? Ordinarily, we would chain two in a corner, but not for this pattern. So now we're going to do another three double crochets, and off you go. Okay? Super easy. Well, it's, it's not that it's super easy, it's just a repetitive stitch. So this is your second one. And then you're going into your third. And there you go. So now you've got three there, chain one, three there, you're going to chain one again. Okay, now we're doing another three double crochets. And as you can see, I'm still crocheting over that tail end. If you are finding that uncomfortable, just pass it at the back and keep crocheting around the centre. But I find it a lot easier and the tail end is gone, but we're still weaving that in at the end. Sorry, guys. <laughs> You're thinking, oh, here she goes again with the weaving in. I'm very pedantic. I am. Fussy as. Okay, we're on our third double crochet there. Sorry, am I going too fast? Give me a chance to pull my yarn over here while you're catching up. All right. So now we are going to chain one. Okay. And guess what? We're going to put another three double crochets. All right. We're getting right to the very end of this round. All right, because this is our last cluster set, we're going to pass that tail end right at the back now. We don't need that anymore because now we are going to, I'm sorry, chaining one <laughs> at the end of the row. And then we have to find that first. I forgot to use the uh, stitch marker. I was going to use a stitch marker to show you a little trick on making sure you grab your stitch at the end of the row. So we'll do that in the next round so I can show you the newbies how to do that well, what you need to do that those two loops there they belong to that double crochet your second double crochet so see these loops right here you have to try and get your hook we're not chaining or anything we're not um sorry we're not putting loops over anything we are just slip stitching so we are grabbing our hook popping it through that little tight stitch there a little bit fluffy the yarn sorry about that guys i've been messing around with it <laughs> I've been practicing the, the top part of the um, teapot with it, so it's frayed a little bit. All right, so here we go. We're in. There's your two loops. You should have two loops over your hook. Now pull your thread through, like so, and pull it through the loop on your hook. Okay? Now what we're going to do is just chain one, or actually pulling up a loop, a long loop there. Grab your scissors. We're going to cut this thread because we are changing colours to our next colour and our next colour is green now it's up to you what colour you want to use I'm going to be using the green you have your chain one three double crochets and you've got those three chains what classifies double crochet so three double crochets chain one three double crochets chain one and so on okay so what I want you to do find a spot anywhere you like I'm just going to go right opposite I'm going to find any one of those corners where the chain one space is Pop your hook just in the space. No, no stitches, no nothing. Just in a space. Now, grab your green or whatever colour you're using. Pop it over your hook. And just pull the loop through. So you should have a tail end and a working end. Grab your tail end, pass it in front and hold it there. Now this is a tip I should have showed you before. We're chaining up our three like normal. So it's one, two and three. Oops, don't lose the loop like I just did. Now we're going to do a normal double crochet in that space again, like we did in the previous round. And just right there, this is where the tip comes in. You grab your little stitch marker and that stitch that we did just before this one, you pop your stitch marker through the loops that we're going to pop them through at the end of the round. So right at the end of the round, we will be able to find that stitch the stitch that I always and I 
am unable to find because yours truly crochets very tightly. <laughs> okay, so now we're doing another double crochet and that's classified as your third double crochet, including those chains, okay? Chaining one. All right, so now we are going to pop our three double crochets. And I'm still crocheting over that tail end, okay? Finish off your corner there. Pass your tail end at the back now, okay? We're going to jump right over these three double crochets, straight into that chain space, and do three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets. Okay, it's two, and three, chain one, one, two, and three. Now, again, if, when you're getting to this tail end here, if you've got to it already and you've messed it up, I'm sorry, <laughs> but you want to make sure that you're going into the space and not over that stitch because that is not the space the space is there now what I do and you don't have to do this if it confuses you I crochet over that tail end okay you don't have to so you're going to pop your three double crochets in that space one see I've let go of the tail end now because it's already in there two and three chain one one two and three now we're going to jump into that very next corner with our cluster set our double cluster set which is three double crochets you know it now don't you chain one and three double crochets so this is not the usual version of a granny square. This is a modified version, chain one, and three double crochets. Just because we want to fit it on our pot. If we made it the normal version where you're putting chains in between each cluster set and two chains on the corner, then your piece will, your square itself will be far too big. So you've got three, one, three, okay? Now remember that stitch marker? Remember how I said I always have I struggle to get my hook in? I won't struggle now because that stitch marker has been tugging at that stitch, giving me plenty of space to put the hook in. So I can actually take it undone if, if I want to. You don't have to. You can pop your hook in there. But I know exactly where it is now. It's right there. Easy. Sometimes um, a little tip like that will help you with your work if you crochet fairly tightly. Now, I, I know about that tip, I just never use it. <laughs> and I just forget to mention it to you guys. So you're slip stitching through, you're pulling up your loop. Why? Because we're gonna change colors yet again. So pop your scissors there, give it a cut, and there you go. So far, it's, it's looking like a granny square, isn't it? Even without the third color on. Now yours truly, again, likes to crochet in a place where there's no tail end. Uh, as you know me, if you're new to the channel, that's what I do. So I find a corner, any corner you want. You can use it in the same corner you finish near or wherever, it doesn't matter. It's all the same. You have to weave in those ends anyway eventually. Pop your hook in there. <laughs> Pull a thread, I'm sorry, you have to weave those ends in. I do apologize. <laughs> Pull a thread through, okay? All right. And now you start again, exactly what you did in that round, except there's one thing different here and I'll show you that in a minute. We are chaining one, two and three doing one double crochet only because for those of you who are new and would like to do this you grab your stitch marker and you pop it hmm let me get a close up there for you stitch marker there pop it through the two loops that you're going to pop it in when you are doing your slip stitch later all right you don't need to this is just to help the newbies okay i hope that helps them okay so now we're doing our it's actually classified as our third double crochet. Oh, too far away. Sorry, guys. All right. Now we are chaining one and we're doing three double crochets. Because the chains in the beginning of the row always classifies as a double crochet in this pattern. All right. It doesn't in every pattern, but it does in this one here. Okay. 
So pop that little thread at the back now. Now, if you're anything like me and you started where there's a loop, little, you know, um, thread there, you can just crochet over it. But now in every round, you're going to have this little space. So you need to pop three double crochets in these middle spaces before you get to your corner. All right. Now I'm just going to crochet over that tail end. You don't need to. It's just an easy way of doing things. And I just do one double crochet over it and then I let it go. And then do two and then do three in that space. Super easy, yeah? And then you pop in the corner. I'm going to speed it up a little bit and do your three, two, three, one, three. See, I nearly said three, two, three then. It's automatic reaction to say that. It's three double crochets, chain one and the three double crochets. <laughs> it's funny what you get used to, isn't it? Been doing granny squares for a hundred thousand years now. I'm exaggerating by a few million, of course. And I just get used to it. So we're jumping into our space with three double crochets or one cluster set. We're jumping into our corner with a double cluster set, which means three, chain one and three. Chain one and three double crochets. If I'm going too fast, well, you can actually pause the video here and catch up when you're ready. But we're almost at the end of the round. Jump into your middle space with your, whoops, without pulling up threads underneath, with your one cluster set of three double crochets. Okay, nice and quiet this morning. No tractors, no cars, no buses. <laughs> it's nothing outside today, which is a good thing. Jumping into our corner space with our double cluster set, meaning three double crochets, chain one, and three double crochets. So when I have my website up and running, this pattern will be free on the website. Yay! <laughs> and it is coming the website, it really is. And um, so when you hear me say that three cluster set on the written pattern, or see it on the written pattern, you'll know that's what it means. I do explain that in the pattern as well. Don't forget we're jumping into our middle space with our three double crochets. Everything is explained um, before the pattern anyway, so the pattern is easier to do. Now, we are here. That's where our stitch marker is with our stitch that we're going to put our double crochet in. I'm sorry, our slip stitch in. So I know what I'm doing, so I'm going to pull it out. You can leave it in there while you're doing it if you like. I find it awkward. But by leaving it in there, it's actually helped me separate the stitch, which is a bonus. And then you just slip stitch it in, like so. Pull it through. And yes, you are going to pull up a loop. Ta-da! <laughs> You're thinking, what? <laughs> no, it's true. <laughs> Best part is, you have done your first granny square. Now, turn over. I'm going to show you one tail end. In actual fact, I might show you the one that's awkward, which is right here now we crocheted well I did crocheted over this tail end already if you weren't a stickler like me you could cut that but I know that after a few washes that will come undone okay so I get really pedantic and I go back the other way so I sewn weaved in my weaved in my end I've put my um, thread through the needle and then I just grab the needle and don't just pop the needle through because you're going to unravel what you just did. Literally find a spot in there, right in, where you can split the yarn on the inside. Just turn your work, making sure you can't see your needle and pop your needle through there and give it a tug. Guess what? We're going to do it again. <laughs> so that's classified as been done twice was a crochet over it once we've weaved it through a second time then we're going to go back another way in a different area just so that we don't unravel what we just did and away we go that's a third time if you've only done two you are welcome to do one more but I am done because I've done one before as well so there you go that is how I weave in my ends now the corners are a lot easier you go in and out the same way don't do this one here because we are going to crochet over that and then we can weave it in a lot easier okay so weave in all your other ends like all of these leave your top one go ahead and do your 12 squares 
and meet me back here in whatever, however long it takes you to do your 12 squares. And we will get ready to do this part of the tutorial. Oh, you're thinking it's not very flat. It's not supposed to be flat. No, <laughs> it's supposed to be round because we want it to go over. Oh, I don't know if I bought that out. I haven't. No, our little pot like that. Okay, so it's going to be round. Your squares will be square. Put it that way. Your squares will be the square, but this part will be round. <laughs> I put it that way because it was upside down. Okay. Beautiful. We love, love, love. Okay. So meet me back here when you have finished your 12 squares and we shall continue with what's going to happen next. Yay. <laughs> That's the best part. Good luck, guys. Also, guys, I wasn't going to show you, but I did want to show you this one thread right here. Um, notice how this is a small square with half doubles that I've done in the past for something else um, because I've just weaved in that other one <laughs> so um, I thought I'd just quickly show you how to weave in that middle end so with the middle one we crocheted over it but still go through oh, see if I can get a close-up there for you still go through and get in and sew in right in there make sure you can't see the needle on the other side all right and just pull your needle through and then give it a tug and what it does is it tends to close up let me show you some of the squares that i have already done see how it's kind of closed up a little bit there all right it's you can still see a tiny little gap very small see my finger at the back but it's closed up a lot more by doing it this way you have closed up more so just keep going in the round making sure you can't see it on that side just once and then on the way back, you go back around again in a different area, of course. You don't want to unravel what you just did. Oh, check the side. <laughs> I'm just so used to it not going through. Um, but the one time you don't check, that's what will happen. <laughs> so pop your needle through there. Check the other side. All good. All right. So that's pretty much all you needed to do with that. All right. So head off on your own now and complete your 12 granny squares and then we will do this part of the tutorial yay i love this part this is my favorite part of the tutorial okay so go ahead and do that and i'll meet you back here very soon 